Hello and welcome to Tuner Tips by Todderbert. In front of us with the X-Star LC4. This is a 1.5 volt lithium battery charger with four AA or four AAA rechargeable batteries. You can find this kit selling for about 25 bucks at Amazon. I'll put links below to the AA version. The AAA version might be available soon. It may or may not be the same price. Uh, but it comes with a charger, which is nice. I can charge both types of batteries, AAA or the AA's. So let's look at the box. Cool. Yep. Charger. Comes with four batteries to get you going. Uh, people have a lot of questions about this 1.5 volt lithium technology. I think it's really cool and promising. Uh, this is a radio channel. And a lot of people are going to buy these and wonder, hey, I'm going to have a perfect setup for my radio that you know needs 1.5 volt uh, output. Well, I'll be honest with you right now as you're watching this video, do not buy these batteries for radios. They're not meant for radio use because I'll explain here and do a little demo. They produce RFI uh, installed in the device and when they're just sitting loose on the table. <laughs> yes, it's true uh, because they have an active uh device inside that's always on and always switching to high voltage to low voltage to get the 1.5 volts from the internal 3.7 volts. So yeah, that's how that works. So you need to use this charger with these batteries because it outputs at 5 volts. There you go. Uh, it charges the double A's at half amp and it charges the triple A's close to quarter amp. Give you an idea. So it recognizes which battery is installed. That's good because you don't want to fast charge the smaller ones for safety reasons. Okay, so I took everything out of the box, go through this quickly. We get a charger. You get your four batteries. Now, I have one of them missing. Um, <laughs> it's in a device at the moment. And you get your charging cable. Yay! USB to Type C, which is nice to see, of course. <laughs> a little rhyme there. And the manual, which is like pretty much a one page thing. Uh, very basic. So I think it's the same as what's on the box. Um, here you go for posterity. And down here below, operation, and we'll plug it in and show you how it charges. Pretty simple setup. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, go do some demoing real quick. So yeah, um, technology-wise, uh, these are meant to be run in different devices, and we'll talk about which are the best uh, for these. I also have the double A's. Give you an idea. Here's some double A's. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. I like them. I use them in certain devices that are perfect in flashlights. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's the AA versions. Now, what I want to do is just kind of do a quick size comparison on the batteries um, so you can see the difference. There really is no huge difference here. Here's the alkaline nickel metal hydride for the AA, and then the same with the AAA, and we'll just kind of zoom on down. And the only issue I had was the positive terminal on the AA version. It seemed kind of recessed a bit, but the AAA version was not. As you can see, the positive terminal is easy to see. And on the X stars, you can see it's more flush. So that's the only issue I had. I had to take and move my batteries around because some were uh, the positive terminal was easy to access than the others. So, so I guess it's how it's wrapped from the factory. But there you go. Okay, size so comparison out of the way. All right, let's uh, talk about features of the batteries because uh, everybody's going to want to know. So these are low self discharge, uh, which is really nice. Uh, they say these can sit for two years and not be discharged, uh, be down to 80%. That's pretty amazing, uh, being that they're always active. Um, what I mean by active, this is what I mean. Another reason why you can't use them on a radio. So here's a CC Skywave. I'm just going to bring this back up to just show you. Now, the radio has regular batteries installed or nickel metal hydrides. So we'll turn it on. We're letting you play Bulls GM. We got the trade deadline. is Thursday. Thursday. Now I bring a battery in. So as you can see, these batteries are always active, so not good for radio use, but good for other devices. And uh, we'll get into which devices this be good for. Go through our feature list first. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and zoom these back on down, downtown. So yeah, we got the low self-discharge. Um, they have charge status LEDs, which we'll get to see in a moment. I'm going to plug in the charger. Um, Actually, we can do that right now while I'm talking about it. So here's our charger. Um, I have a X-Star. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Come on, switch. It's got a little meter on it. I guess I probably should just bring this back up. Yeah, and then we can kind of show you the power that this thing's taking in. Let's plug this in here. 
Type C. The light comes on, activity light. And of course, you just plug in here. So you double A. You can do triple A's at the same time, which is nice. There's our flashing light. Like I said, that light only works uh, when you're charging. It's pulling a half amp on that single. Uh, double A, and if you put in a triple A, it shouldn't go to a full amp. It should be like a little over three quarters or close to that. Yeah. So it charges these around 250 and these at a half, half an amp, quarter amp. So that's all it is. And then once these are done, they'll be solid green. It's that simple. Um, this will work with a power bank or any kind of portable power source as well. But uh, so yeah, uh, features. Blinking light, which is nice, telling you that exquisite LED blinking light, they call it. Turn that back on so you can see what's happening. We could load it up. We could put some more batteries in here. These batteries are charged, so they probably will stop while we're doing this. And you can see them all flashing here. Just a quick little demo. Now, don't charge other batteries in here, just these batteries. And of course, don't use these batteries again in other chargers. Only this charger charges these batteries. There you go. Cool. There's kind of our output. What's happening there? All right. So another thing is it has really cool uh, low voltage prompts. So as the battery discharges in a device, um, the internal mechanism here will trigger a 1.1 volt output to signal low battery. And devices recognize this as a drop in voltage and will put uh, on their meter, if, if your device has a battery level meter, as two bars or half capacity left. Uh, that's pretty nice because it gives you a warning to charge the batteries. You're not stuck with uh, a dead device. And I guess the big ones, electronic safes or electronic locks that have readouts like that. So that's kind of neat. They're going to do a little light show there for us. Um, and I'm going to show it to you with a flashlight that I have here. I did some demoing with a flashlight, and you get to see it actually cycling the flashlight. It's fun. Um, they said these get five, or sorry, 1,500 charge cycles, which is pretty amazing when lithium technology is usually 500. I thought that was pretty interesting. That said 1,500 at least. Uh, amazing. Uh, maybe they used better technology. It's equivalent. One battery is equivalent to 500 dry cell batteries. So when you're doing the math, when you buy this kit, um, you know, divide it out and see what it's worth it. It's totally worth it at 25 bucks. Okay, if, if, if that's what happens. Uh, this depends. It's new technology. I have no way of testing that. It's a long time. Uh, They'll have upgrades by the time I finish that testing. So I'm just going to go what they say by advertised, uh, give or take, you know, uh, that amount. But we have one battery equals 500 dry cells. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So you can see they're charging up here nice. Working temperatures. Now, I tested this. Uh, let's go ahead and just unplug these. And we'll demo with the flashlights that I got sitting here. Now, for flashlights, these work great. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to unplug this charger here. Get this out of the way. So I used uh, these Sofern... These are cool. I've reviewed these before. These are cool. I think you can still get these on certain avenues. These are the C01S's. Um, yeah, we had a very cold spell here. We were below zero. It was negative eight Fahrenheit, um, and it was very cold. Um, it's close to negative 20 Celsius. So, yeah, um, operating temperature for these batteries is rated at negative four degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius, and upwards to uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit um, or 60 degrees Celsius working temp. Amazing. Charging temp is different. I believe it was uh, 10 Celsius to 40 Celsius. But uh, yeah, there's the charger. Pretty simple. We're done with that. Um, but for yeah, demoing the lights, uh, I walked outside with these things exposed in the elements below zero weather, negative eight degrees. I had nickel metal hydride in one and the X-Star 1.5 volt lithium in the other. And, uh, yeah, walking for 30 minutes in the cold, uh, either one, they did pretty good. I was pretty impressed with the EBL, and I was also impressed with the X-Star. Um, they both did very well. X-Star kept its brilliance brighter. The EBL started to fade a little bit uh, towards the end there. And as I used the flashlights more in another walk, uh, I noticed the EBL, of course, started to dim. The X-Star stayed nice and bright. And then once the X-Star lost uh, its capacity, it flashed the flashlight, and then these flashlights have two modes, a high and a low. That switching causes the flashlight to think there's a mode change, and it changes to the low mode. So you still got a light source, which is amazing, and it's not flashing anymore. With the EBL uh, nickel metal hydride battery, all that happens on high is it starts to dim. It doesn't switch off or change modes like the X-Star will with that voltage warning. 
it uh, stayed on. So, uh, but it was dim. So it's the same as putting it to low. I uh, just thought I'd show it to you. But let's go ahead. Let's see. One of these has the nickel metal hydride. Okay, this one has the X star. So when I turn this one on, it starts in high and goes to low. Let's see if I can demo this here. See, there you go. That's what happens when it's low. Okay, that's when it's in this flashlight. I'm going to show you a different flashlight. Here is a nickel metal hydride, and it just goes kind of high to dim. It just dims down. Um, it's at 1.1 volts. So we're going to take this battery out here. Again, very impressed in flashlight use. Uh, very happy with them. Uh, other uses, uh, you can do uh, what they call different cameras, uh, toys, um, RC. I have some things on the bench I'm going to show you. Calculators, uh, external uh, music gear, you know, portable music gear, like microphones and groove boxes and stuff. I'm going to show you some of that too. And of course, gaming. So uh, here's our battery. I was going to put it into an Olight. Here we are. This is a single mode flash. Like a lot of you guys know what this one is, the i3e. I believe it's like 90 lumens or 110 lumens. I can't remember, but it just has one high output. If you put it in here, you'll get to see this low voltage uh, warning or prompt, they call it. So we'll leave it on and it should start to flash. So this is what's going to happen in your device is it's going to run at 1.5 volts and it's going to drop to zero and go back to 1.5 volts. And that should trigger uh, the low voltage alarm on the devices you're using. Now, if you're using a motorized device, it's going to be on and then off like this, maybe. Or if you have multiple batteries, it's probably going to, you know, stutter. It's probably having a stutter effect because not all batteries are going to discharge at once. Uh, but being a single light, you get to see this uh, signaling in action. So it's, it's going to 1.5 and then dropping to 1.1. 1.1 is not enough to drive this. So it's off. So there you go. It's pretty cool. You get to see it signaling. So that's that demoed. Yeah, very. That's what the XR does when it runs low. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, gaming devices, you know, game controllers, electronic safes uh, are a big thing. Electronic locks, uh, blink cameras, calculators, trail cameras, camera flash, which I didn't know, portable music gear, like I was going to mention, and etc. So they're advertised as ideal for devices that need high power consumption. Um, so I thought this would be cool. A old school Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, this thing eats the power up. And uh, let's go ahead and demo it. So let's see. I don't want to use the same battery I had. Okay, let me make sure I grab the right batteries here. And uh, yeah, you can tell I like yellow, right, guys? <laughs> we'll just demo these in here. Now, I don't know what it does in these gaming ones, but you might want to save your progress if you got a game that saves in case, you know, it just blinks out on you because it could do that. <laughs> I haven't really tested it fully on discharge with gaming systems, but here we go. Nintendo. And then uh, we got Pac-Man in here. No lit screen. It's old school. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it works fine. Um, yeah, Pac-Man in my yellow Game Boy Pocket. So that's a use for it. There's also, uh, you know, other uses, of course, like I mentioned, uh, calculators like this one here takes four AAA batteries. Uh, nice to have rechargeables. Uh, it works great when it's a full voltage, of course, no dimming of the screen. Uh, right now, I believe there's nickel metal hydrides in here. Uh, I might switch it over to the other battery since it's not RFI sensitive. Uh, that's another thing you could use. And of course, more portable music gear is fun. Uh, this is a pocket operator, if you guys know these. It looks like a calculator, but it's actually a drum drum computer. It's pretty cool. It's got a step sequencer and it's got these little drum sounds, cymbals, hi-hats, and you can make little beats with it, uh, hook it up to other music gear. And it takes two AAA batteries uh, on the go there. I think I think it's just fun. Um, and you could use these uh, batteries along with it. So just ideas in general what you can use these batteries for. So I would recommend it. Flashlights, devices like this, uh, portable gaming controllers uh, are going to be your best bet. So yeah, the LC4, we're done. Um, it was a pretty basic episode uh, capacity-wise. I didn't really explain too much about that. Uh, they rate it in 2,700 milliwatt hours. People think that's deceiving. It's not. It's because the internal battery is lithium, and it's converting DC to DC. Uh, just to give you an idea, this AA battery compared to an alkaline. I don't know if I did this already. I may have, but if I didn't. So the 
alkaline has a uh, milliwatt hour of 3750. Uh, so you, I kind of factored in, there's no exact science here, but uh, about 60 to 70 percent efficiency on this versus this. So you're getting about 60 percent of the power you're getting from the bigger battery. Hence why one battery equals 500 dry batteries after 1500 charge cycles. I'll give you an idea. So that's the AA and of course the AAA version uh, was a little less. Your XSTAR is rated at 1200 milliwatt hours and your uh, standard alkaline is rated at 1800 milliwatt hours. So again, uh, that could be internal capacity and of course it could lose a little bit going from DC to DC. And it's got to be just a very small amount. Yeah, terminals are nice. Uh, I just like the idea of the constant output. Very cool with no dimming. I mean, it's it's straight across. It, there is no dimming. It just doesn't. And it starts doesn't doing that voltage change, so you know it's time to charge them up. So very cool. Loving that unique low voltage indicator stuff. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there you are. It's a deal. Um, if you're not using it for radios, <laughs> if you're using them with flashlights and all those devices I showed you, uh, it's a good setup. And it's totally worth it uh, so far. I mean, I haven't charged these 1,500 times, so I have no idea longevity. Uh, but I'm, I I like lithium technology, and I think the, it's going to last. And I think it's going to be fine. Um, I do like nickel metal hydride batteries. There's always a place for these. And a lot of flashlights utilize these properly. Um, so they're always going to be around. Uh, I just like the power that this delivers. The 1.5 volts is better than the 1.2 uh, standard of the uh, Nikomet Hydrides. In older devices, these will shine, like I showed you with the Game Boys. You know, you can even get it an OG Game Boy, too, like this one here. Too. Yeah, OG. <laughs> the original. In yellow, of course. With a mod. Got a green light mod on it. It's pretty cool. So there it is, the X-Star LC4 with the 1.5 volt lithium batteries. If you have any questions, just comment below. There's a lot to this. Um, and hopefully I uh, kind of give you some idea on what you can expect um, with these batteries and what you can use them for. So awesome. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you did. Two, if you like X-Star products, you want to see more, just hit subscribe at the bell icon. I like to feature their stuff, power banks, chargers, different battery types they have. Uh, very cool setup. Very happy with this. And of course, three, comment below what you think about this new technology. Um, yeah, most of you guys are radio, and you probably aren't happy with the idea that they put off that RFI even sitting here. I had this next to my radio. I didn't even know that we were putting off RFI. I'm like, why is my radio buzzing? I don't have anything on. It was these things just sitting there loose. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, um, I just it's, it's interesting it does that. But if you're a flashlight guy or you have other devices, I'm sure you do. Uh, most of us have flashlights and we, a lot of us are gamers. You know, I'm old school. I like my gaming. <laughs> um, you know, some of us like music production. You know, there's the Vol Korg Volca series. It uses double A's. It uses six of those bad boys. Uh, and uh, you can just be out there. Just just know your time frame. You know, for music, you're doing a production, like a live set or something. Just know how long they'll last. Do some testing before. So there you go. All right, so yeah, any questions? Like I said, comment below and then uh, let me know what you think about the LC4. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and we'll see you in my next video.